Today we're going to focus on looking at self-control and self-management. As humans, we tend to get frustrated when we lose control of a situation in our life. Maybe something doesn't go our way, our plans fall apart, or something frustrating happens and maybe it keeps happening over and over and over again. Self-control, otherwise called self-management, is what we do to keep us focused on solving problems rather than having our problems bring us to the point where they control us and affect our actions negatively. The first topic we're going to look at today dealing with self-control is dealing with unexpected situations. Let's start this topic by reflecting. Think about a time when you were either frustrated or when you didn't feel like you had total control of a situation. Your reaction in a situation is important. If something bad happens and you react in a way that only makes bad things worse, it can cause impacts that make a situation harder to deal with. For example, if I break something accidentally and in my frustration I end up breaking something else because I'm raging and angry and flailing around everywhere, all I've really done is multiply how many things I've broken and probably exerted a lot of useless energy doing that. Bad things will happen, and they frequently happen unexpectedly. That's why we'll look at strategies you can use to help you maintain self-control in almost every situation. And that brings us to topic two, which is taking control. Let's start topic two by reflecting. Why do you think feeling like having control of a situation is important for many people? Experts recommend pausing for a second before making any decisions and reflecting on whether you are keeping these four things in check. Ask yourself each time, are you keeping your behavior in check? Are you keeping your words in check? Are you keeping your thoughts in check? And are you keeping your attitude in check? Behavior is just another word for the way we act, and in almost every place we are, certain expectations for behavior exist. Next time you get frustrated or angry, ask yourself, is this how I usually behave? Letting anger or frustration change what makes you you is where you should draw the line. Oftentimes people who get in trouble for breaking a rule or even breaking a law say afterwards that they weren't acting like themselves. It's because they temporarily disconnected from what makes them the person they are. While this isn't always the easiest thing to control, stopping, pausing, and asking yourself if this is the kind of behavior you want to be known for by others can help you make correct decisions. So going off that, our first piece of advice is going to be related to behavior. First, stop and ask, are you acting like yourself? Let's move on to words. We want to be controlling our words first. So unlike the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words do hurt and they can hurt for a long time. Ask most people who are a few years or even many years older than you are, and they can tell you about a time in their life when they wish they could take back words they've said. Words uttered in frustration or anger come out in ways that end up hurting everybody. Before getting into an argument or a yelling match with somebody else, stop and write down what you're going to say first. Read it out loud to yourself and think if this is something that you'll regret or not. Give yourself time to cool down and take control of your words first. So piece of advice number two having to do with words would be stop and ask, will I regret what I say? You also want to take control of your thoughts in a similar way. Self-control or self-management is sometimes just about taking pauses to think through something before you act on it. Pause the tidal wave of rushing thoughts that's your mind for a moment before you do anything and center your thoughts on finding solutions rather than lashing out at problems. Sometimes a controlled and thoughtful response can solve a problem quicker than you would think. So piece of advice number three would be to stop and ask, have I taken time to calm my thoughts? Lastly, your attitude in a situation matters. Sometimes it's infuriating to hear someone say to stay positive or to smile more. Because when you're angry or upset or feeling like things are out of your control, those can be very difficult things to do. It's not always easy to smile and putting on a fake expression probably isn't going to help anybody feel better. That being said, it does help a lot of people to take a moment and reflect on their attitude in a situation. If you go into a situation already feeling defeated, or like you're just ready to get angry, it's not going to help you deal with the problem ahead. 
Some people have trouble getting back on track, and if you find yourself on that situation instead of spiraling, it helps a lot of people to just seek out a trusted friend and ask for advice. Or better yet, to go to a trusted adult, a counselor, others. Moving forward into a positive mindset is a self-control strategy that will help you in a lot of situations, even if it's sometimes difficult to do. So the last piece of advice would be to reflect on your attitude and go into situations with an open mind, or to ask for help if you can't. Our next topic is going to be self-control to stay safe. Pausing and reflecting before making a decision can have a major impact. You've probably seen friends or people around you get in trouble for an impulsive decision. Controlling those impulses can keep you from being caught up in things that you don't want to be caught up in. As a teacher, I've seen a lot of students get in trouble for something that they thought would be really minor, or just be something fun that ended up turning into an absolute disaster. What they thought would be maybe like a harmless prank on somebody ends up turning into a situation where they're actually bullying someone else. Something looks like it'll be fun, but it ends up with them roped into something that ends up getting them in trouble. Take a moment first to think about who you're around, what you're doing, and if you've thought through what happens first step by step. Make sure no one else will be impacted negatively in any way before you do something, because ultimately that will reflect back on you. Now going through all this stuff, one thing that you do want to remember and our next topic is to let yourself have fun. Don't let self-control go too far. It is okay to have a little fun and relax. It's rare, but there are people who get too caught up on trying to manage every little aspect of life. Control can only go so far, and if you let too many little things stress you out, that can also have a negative impact. For example, studying for a test is obviously a very good thing. You're taking control of your grades and managing your priorities to put something that is important first. But... Doing absolutely nothing but studying for a test, if you do that, you're swinging the pendulum too far the other way. If you spend all of your time studying for a single test to the point where you can't relax, to where you can't sleep, to where you can't have any fun, you've taken self-control too far. The key to self-control and self-management is what we call self-assessment. Stop and ask yourself questions first. Always ask if the actions you're going to take benefit you, if they harm others, and if you've really thought things through. If you do these, you'll be working towards a healthy level of self-control. So throughout this discussion on self-control and self-management, I've asked you to pause and think about actions before you make difficult decisions. What we want to do to wrap up and review is just ask ourselves a few reflection questions as we go forward. If you need to pause and ask these questions to yourself, you can, or if you're doing this as part of like a video lesson, you can answer them as you go through. The first question I've got for you asks, give some examples of how you've seen students act impulsively. What are the consequences of such actions? Question two, what are some of the drawbacks of too much self-control? Question three, what can a person do to find the right balance with self-control? And question four, our final question asks, name some benefits of self-control other than the ones that we've talked about so far. That wraps up today's discussion. Remember that you can always ask a trusted adult for help. We'd be glad to help you with advice on things like self-control, self-management, and other things we'll be talking about as we go through other lessons. Thanks.